Welcome everybody to my unexpected green, a green deck that actually is really really much fun to play but also performs on a really high level. So far I'm undefeated with this deck, so let's see how it will perform also in our gameplay part. I haven't played it now, but we're gonna see it together. And what makes this deck so unexpected? Well, our top end. Not only we are playing here bottleneck stash for our treasure production, but also because it's an artifact it's easy to find with our Atraxa. Yes, we are playing an Atraxa because you see maybe we have a long of ramp and we have a lot of mana fixing uh, treasure production with our um, gala gritters but also with our uh, jewel thief and also of course our stomper we can ramp really really fast and big spells like attraction on turn four on turn five easily possible and is really really fun to execute but also of course another fun fact uh, fun factor in this deck is portal to perexa and nisa who can finish the games out of nowhere this is why it's so unexpected because suddenly all your small mana dorks and all your tokens for your briefcase that can draw us a bunch of cards are becoming something like 7788 with tramplers that can finish out the game really really fast. Another card I had great success in the uh, testing of this deck is our Contitude of the Worlds, a 4 mana artifact again, we can find it with our Atraxa, but this card actually allows you pseudo reanimate something or play something from your graveyard once each turn and if you do so you cannot cast any other spells, but usually this is often a GG if you play some of your big spells that have been countered or maybe been destroyed and you can just repeat the process. For the mana base I run 24 lands and I believe this deck performs the best with 24 lands. I never had an issue with drawing too much or too little lands. This is why 24 is a perfect number here. But I believe this beautiful deck will show itself on the gameplay. So let's go together and check out how it will perform on the ladder. Welcome everybody to this unexpected green. And to be honest I enjoy to build around or brew around mono green because there are just so many possibilities so many um versatilities that is currently available not only with current standard but also in previous sets but i think green never got the love that it deserved this is why let's try to break it in some sort with some artifacts some ramps but also with some attractions and my opponent looks like a naya token deck um this is definitely something. Let's see if we can ramp into things. Let's create some treasure tokens. Gaining some life, gaining some lands. And see if we can overcome our opponent. And I'm sorry for the noise if you hear it. Somehow my neighbors decided to renovate their balcony. So they are building already the whole morning. I tried to wait a little bit. Maybe they were would have been finished earlier, but ah, this is a Mondrak token deck, and I am Mondrak deck. It's okay. That's okay. Why not? And join the dance. Sure. So opponent goes big. Opponent goes white. Tries to go fast, and let's see if we can overcome this. Hmm. Should have not played the land, but uh, let's see what we have on top. Maybe we have there something. Um, create another treasure token. Okay. Wait a second. I have... I have one, two, three. What is missing? Am I missing something? Then we can bush rack. No, I need to save it for Mondrak, right? But Mondrak is still... What is it? A 4-4, right? So Tomper will um, exchange with it. Am I happy with it? I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm really happy with it. So let's play Let's play the, the thingy. And let's uh, put a counter on it. Just to block a little bit more. And then let's chill. Because my opponent most likely will go with tokens. I can augur the, the Chiki Bricky. I can uh, the, block the one ones, And then... I think we are good to go. My opponent is maybe looking for Mondrak or... I mean, if he would have Mondrak, he would not play Join the Dance um, with his treasures. And let's see... If we can overcome the token madness from my opponent. Jetmir, nice! Nice, okay, so Stomper will definitely go for the Jetmir. Not really caring about this damage. Can already play Atraxa. Will Atraxa save me is the question. I believe so. Atraxa will always save you. 
how about that? Um, exile you. Don't need more tokens here. Opponent didn't expect a truck, so this way it's unexpected. Uh, one of you, one of beside you. Jesus, this noise, huh? And what creature do we take? Another Gala Greeter? Sure. Right? Yeah. Let's get this rolling. Um, then we can fight. You control, fight, gain some life. Let's fight, my friend. This is why fight is good. And then we're gonna play the Bozaichu. Or should we? Nah. Nah, we don't need to. We don't need to deal with the Fable. A uh, Traxa from the top is always really, really nice. And what an opening game. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more and let's go into the another one. To recover from a Traxa is always really, really difficult. And let's see here on the draw. I don't remember last game. We went first or second. I believe we went second because my opponent casted uh, Chicky Bricky on turn two for me, I think. So uh, let's see. Let's see if we can recover from... But here maybe soldiers... Because, yeah, I think legendary soldiers. Um, so let's go with Gala Greeters. And next turn we're gonna follow up Hugan. Or Stomper. Oh, Hugan. Hugan is always good to play early on. My opponent decides... Ah, you are Esper Legends. Esper Legends, you say? Let's play Hugan. I think Hugan is here the more valuable pick and next turn we can put a silverback elder on the board and life is as soon as you have silverback um, on the board life is not important at all because you can trigger him so many times you gain gain so many life um, it's just incredible okay opponent with Sheldred Sheldred is also not something that I'm really scared of the only thing I want to do is to play my Silverback Elder in combination with other creatures. And this is what I cannot do because I didn't draw my land, right? Because this one land and I would have paid, played it, right? No, one, two, three, yeah, yeah, more, more than one land. Okay, in this case, to block you... Oh my god, is playing with the doggy. I can double spell. Or I can thief into something else, right? I want to keep the treasure going. So let's play it like this. Let's put another treasure on the board. And uh, let's chill. Jesus, this, this, this neighbor, so... You feel like in a dentist appointment. The whole time my opponent has some removal, but it's okay. In Portal to Perexion will say thank you as soon as my opponent played the third creature. And I think this will be the nail. And I feel like this deck has everything. We have a lot of card draw, we have ramp, we have huge creatures that are really difficult to recover. Um, we have card selection. So uh, I, I would say, do I recommend to build this sort of decks? If you enjoy mono green, definitely yes, because this deck, as a, we have life gain. What do you want more? We have counter synergy with Hugan, right? Right? Like modified synergy. What do you want more? There is nothing really more that you can my opponent attacks with four mana, open wandering emperor, most likely. Um will it be do I care? He play wandering emperor, give plus two geeks so I cannot attack with my teeth. Sure, let's 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 jump block it. I, I don't really care about this damage, to be honest. Like right now, no. My opponent has also most likely uh, um, destroy evil for my silverback. This is why even more important to play it on curve. And okay, silverback can also deal with the might. Good, it's definitely good. Four mana open. Two of them are for white. So, Wandering Emperor with very high possibility. Create another treasure token. Play another land. Can I play you now? You and three mana. Yes, I do. But I also can play Portal next turn. Um, I want to play Portal, to be honest. But I can also...
Let me think. Otherwise, I can play Stomper into Lone Speaker. I think this is a better play right now. Because uh, the, the um, Amort's Crab Gorger, he will still trigger my, uh, my Elder to destroy something. And uh, Stomper, my opponent sits with Wandering Emperor, obviously. I mean, maybe he has also a counter spell, right? Um, or some sort of removal, but who cares? Who cares? Uh, maybe make this appear, but make this appear. Eretai, okay, sure. sure. Eretai is good. Gave me another card draw. In this case, let's play you. Say yes. Gain some life. Uh, decline. One, two. But this is actually just one treasure, right? This is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can already play Portal to Perexia. Let's let's play it too. Just to create a treasure here and grow my Gala Greeter a little bit. Put a 1 1 counter. Create a treasure. Decline. No attacks. So let's see what my opponent has to offer next. Gaining some life. In, like, let's say, I, I still think my opponent has. Okay. Okay. Sure. I, I still believe my opponent has the. Um... Whatchamacallan? Um, Wandering Emperor. So let's see how far we will go. Here, I take the trades. Sugar. This will allow me to play Silverback Elder into the uh, Amort Scrap, and this will definitely pop off for me. And another land will help me. Oh no, now Vitalia not. Vitalia not, or oh, yes. So he sacrificed Vitalia, Scurf, and most likely Geeks, right? I can play Silverback Elder and kill the Skyf. Silverback Elder will also protect me for a while, so let's do that. Play the Silverback Elder. Uh, we can gain here some life if you want to. Then let's play you. Silverback and Elder do destroy target artifact or enchantment. Scalf is an artifact, so it's gonna die. And trigger also the Gala Gritter, get another treasure going, and we don't need to attack. So now my opponent has, has something to do, right? The only thing would speak for Portal to Perexia is because my opponent is tapped out. Right, this will speak for the portal to Perexia. Uh, my opponent goes for Sheldred attack. Uh, we're gonna put Silverback Elder into the way. Let's hope he flash in, or maybe he protects with Plaza again. Will be okay, it will be totally okay. One mana left. Trady, trady, my friend. Do you have something else? A tap land, okay. Sure. Let's play you. Let's play Portale to Paraxia. Um, my graveyard, we're gonna take Ugan because this is currently the card that I cannot reanimate with Portal. My opponent had enough. It's like, no Portal? Paraxia? I have Paraxians. How can it happen? Like this, my friend. Like this. Mono green stomps you away. Um, pretty good. I, I was trying another. I liked. I was trying another deck, um, this is why I lost a lot uh, of progress, but uh, this deck functioned finally, and uh, you're gonna see it most likely next, but I'm not gonna spoil too much, so let's go next. And here we are, going first with three Gala Gritters and Anissa. Sounds like a good hand to me. Uh, most likely my opponent is mono black, <laughs> this is why a game gives me all Gala Gritters. Um, and um, Favor the Lens is a really good addition to the game, because now finally I can choose my X and the Lens, I love... Uh, 
then let's say not love. I like them really much. There are multiple basic lands that I like, but the uh, art from um, Exelon is, for me personally, in Magic history, one of the best land arts that uh, that is um, that, that was printed. That was printed. Obviously, I think Exelon is just such a beautiful land. Um, land art and my opponent maybe boros reanimation i faced in the test phase um some reanimation decks with attraxa boros attraxa reanimation but this looks like naya humans naya humans since um since uh crocus made the list i think naya humans catapulted and uh in the value but also in the playability uh, because uh but uh, I, I saw Crocs' list, and this list performs really good in Abzan humans. Okay, this list performs really, really good, like really, really good in um, pressure, pressure, because briefcase is gonna draw me five cards or three cards, four cards. How much cards do you draw? Uh, three cards, three cards. Uh, counter. Counter pressure. Boom, boom, boom. Bam, 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 I'm saying to it. My opponent with every time. Okay. Cool flex, bro. Why not? Oh, give me another briefcase. Sure. Always good. Always good. Card draw on the stick. Always good. Um, and the turn. And Nisa. Should we create some tokens with Nisa? Four mana, Laurent, destroying briefcase is okay. Not mad about it. So, legendary humans, you say, huh? Let's play another briefcase. Just so my opponent knows what's up here. And can I pay you in full? Yes, I do. You cannot counter it. Even if you have every time, um, we're gonna create another. You see, this is how it goes with this deck, and this deck is currently, I think, seven zero undefeated, um, including testing. So in testing in the play queue, I played three games. I went amazingly similar to this game, by the way, where I just generate so much treasures and then. Boom, something big happened. Or you play the Augur, or you play some of your big spells. Um, and uh, in the rank, I play two, and now with you two, three plus two plus two is seven. Yeah, seven zero, seven zero. So let's go more. Let's go three, eight, eight, eight zero. Let's go. Let's, let's see. Against with bit, opponent goes first and is okay. And is okay finding a land, playing Lion or Elf. Uh, we're gonna see if we're gonna need this land or is my opponent taking it slow in this case i think i'm fine with it having three lands in my hand um we are playing a uh, long speaker into thief or maybe hugan first we're gonna see what my opponent can present on the board and looks like a band right is this a band yeah it's a band band humans maybe what did he choose humans yeah band humans so a lot of humans after esper after esper we face humans after Humans, we face another humans, and before... What did we play it in the first game? I forgot. But also some shenanigans. Um, let's see. If, let's see if we can perform here. Shana, nice, bro. Nice. Very nice. So this makes my decision a little bit easier to play um, Tiff. Because uh, Tiff will prevent my opponent from um, attacking. And I need the treasures. This is why I want to keep the treasures for this. Stomper will be really nice now, uh, because we can play Stomper and fight Shana in the um, in the coming back. But the question is always, do I want to do that, right? Do you want to fight Shana because she has a lifelink, we will trade, but he will get line, life in return. Um, or do I for... Ah, nice! Now I know what you are. This is bad. No. This is bad. Uh, so this could be our first defeat, because... Turned on turn 4 without really having an answer in my hand. Really painful. Oof. Are you an answer in my hand? I think you are the answer in my hand, but will it be in time? Is another question. Pass. 
Okay, so currently it's one, two, six, seven, eight. Right? Eight mana. Mm -hmm, okay. I think even portal will not be enough here. Because he can sacrifice things that he don't need, right? We need to spot remove the, the Joda. This is how we can do it. And my opponent goes for... I need to jump even, right? Yeah. I need to jump, jump. There's nothing much I can do. I think this will be our world. First defeat. Um, but 8-1 is also a solid, solid result, I think, for Mono Green. And uh, my opponent can also draw three cards. And if I play port now, he goes Katilda, Bodyguard, and Ashnod, right? This is the two creatures that he needs to, or he wants to get rid of. And we didn't even draw our land here. Um, so let's draw our land. Zbushbek draws us the land. Uh, plays another Hugan. But this is this is a good game. This is the, there is no question as that uh, I, I cannot recover from it. My opponent going first, dropping Jona on turn four is. I mean, I don't even know what can you play. Good game, my friend. Good game. Um, what you can play to prevent this or maybe counter spells, right? Turn four, counter spells. I will play counter spells. No blocks. Let's take it like a big boy. 8-1. Good game with Wit, if you're watching it, and we are gonna go next. Opponent goes first, but we have a Trax in our hand and two Gala Greeters with Augur and Pearl to, per to Perexia. So, really difficult hand. Really difficult hand to keep or to play, but I think I'm gonna keep it um, just because... Okay, you mono red? You mono red, huh? Maybe mono red. So let's take our forest out for the next turn. See, it's mono red. Mono red and keeping up something to remove my Gala Greeter? Maybe. Maybe, baby. Warfare, okay. Oh, well, not the worst, to be honest. I can play Gala Greeter and nothing, or I can play Augur, create a treasure, and next turn double spell, right? Or I can play Loam, also nothing. Yeah, let's play Augur to see what we have on top. Treasure. A land is on top. Uh, let's go back, we cannot block anyway. Back for one damage, and then we're gonna see. If he can ramp fast enough. Reckless inputs. Finding double land. Ooh, this is our chance. This is our chance, my friends. This is our chance. I think this is the chance. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's go. Gala greeters. Into treasure into loam speaker into life into treasure and do i see it right that i can already cast my attracts on next turn i think i see it right so if my opponent don't kill me now i will cast an attracts on next turn yes i will cast an attracts on next turn My opponent goes for Augur. Sure. Then Dome Speaker can block the Epicure. Okay. And the tracks on next turn will be really, really painful for my opponent. Really painful. Down to eight. Play with fire, deals. Okay, overkill. Overkill, 3 damage could go to the face. Okay. In this case, let's go. Let's go Atruxu. Finding a land, playing Lom, uh, Speaker, of course. 
uh, gain some life and show it to me. VCPC, this is not a battle you are made to win. Uh, if I cast turn 5 attracts on the draw. Uh, land, of course. Um, silverback. And briefcase. Yes. Playing land. Playing briefcase? Sure. Playing briefcase. Create another treasure. And swing back for 3 damage. So my opponent has now needs now from these two draws to find to find some amazing burn spells. So I need not only to deal with Atraxa, but also to maybe massage my face a little bit. But I have a life linking blocker and a basic blocker. Show my friend, give it to me. Give it all to me. All you got. Lightning strike, sure. Back to seven, bro. And you know what's happening now, right? Ah, I'm not like this. I'm not like this. I cannot be like that, right? I... Come on. We cannot... He's motivated. He's playing Platinum. He wants to win. He's like, let's go Mono Green. I can beat them. Then Bam attracts a Bam Portal to Perexia next turn. But now we are with Silver, with Elders. Let's go. 9 1. 9 1. Maybe we make 10 1 and then we make a cut. And here we are on the play against Punk. But this hand is super slow, even on the play. Nisa, maybe turn 5, start producing. Mm. I mean, what am I happy to face with this hand? Agro? will overrun me until I play Nisa or Portal to Perexia will overrun me mid-range I have a good chance but I have a lot of value control do I resolve my Nisa do I resolve my Portal don't think so so I think I think there's a mulligan this is a better hand this is a much better hand oh bottle X dash artifact you know Atraxa you know Treasures, you know. <laughs> good card, good card. One of always good, always good to have. So let's see if Funk will be our 10 to 1 or not. And we're gonna go and throw here up front some lands. Because I want to have my three lands for the Stomper. Let's see if there is something else hidden. Uh, Lion of Earth uh, next turn. To see if my opponent has some sort of removal or something else. Haven't met Mono Black so much with this deck, but I met some uh, Ragdos decks in the testing. Ragdos uh, ramp, or not, not ramp, uh, Ragdos uh, mid range with uh, some Shieldreds and some Cutdowns. There is where Lone Speaker is maybe, uh, let's say, a little bit difficult to play. A little bit difficult to play because Cutdown hits it also against uh, Shieldred. We need to jump or depends in what stage our. Life gain is, right? Um, scrapper? Sure. In case my opponent is a reanimation deck, and uh, this is why he's in the deck, because uh, there are reanimation decks out there, also with Atraxa, and as soon as game realizes you play Atraxa, it can often happen that uh, you will... Okay. That uh, you will one mana. Algor? Let's see what we have on top, right? Uh, Hugan, okay. We can also attack with Scrapper and uh, start exiling our graveyard stuff. And um, Hugan is okay, but let's see if we have another land on top, maybe. Hopefully. Do, do, do. Oh, good. Sure. Green. Let's get rid of my graveyard. My opponent is super slow. Keeping on the draw this sort of hand, he would have been punished for ages. So let's see if we can shuffle our library with the Stomper and get another land maybe on top. Because the searching, the looting shuffles the library and... Uh, yes, you see? This is what I meant. You see? This is what I meant. Escalating. Escalating. Good Stomper, huh? Stomper is good. Stomper is really good. Um, you're gonna kill Augur? No? Okay. 
He doesn't want to kill Augur. What, what are you? Five color control? Uh, am I... Heard migration. Am I playing into your plan with... Uh, Chumacolon? Um, drag to the bottom. Looks like it a little bit. Or oh, he has red. Maybe... Um, Brother's Hood. Drag to the bottom. I told you. I told you. Playing you into a briefcase. Two creatures where I can put counters on, obviously. Fable, sure. And Leyline Binding on Hugan. Interesting. Sure. Sure, my friend. Oh, can I follow up by destroying the Leyline Binding? I can. I can. Ah, destroy you. Uh, no attacks. Good turn, no? I think it is good turn. Very good turn for me. And direct to the bottom cannot kill Silver Elder. Let's see what my opponent has else as removal. If my opponent has maybe another ley line binding, I'll direct to the bottom. You see, direct to the bottom. I mean, it will still deal with a lot of my board, but Silverback Elder will survive it and uh, be able to kill Fable. But my opponent is looking for um, ley line binding. And uh, ley line binding to Silverback Elder is a good play. It's a good play. Why not? Why not, my friend? You want to attack? Sure. I will attack too, to be honest. But uh, this two will take care of him. And he is most likely playing into herd migration, right? Like a huge herd migration to finish off the game. And we're gonna see. And lane lane binding is painful for us because it can deal with a lot of other things, right? Like. like portal to perexia or atraxa and stuff like this so this is why being able to playing it on leyline binding is okay another stopper is not what i wanted to be honest but sure why not get it get it boy then uh, let's you let's make some tempo swing to get a little bit of the damage coming, going, coming, going, coming and going. And uh, Lone Speaker with Hugan to, to token. You know that. You know that. Let me check his graveyard, please. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, I think Herd Migration is his win condition, so most likely four copies of Herd Migration. Um, but it's okay. Drag to the bottom is a sweeper of choice. Lane line binding spot removal. Another lane line binding of Hugan. It's not a good choice, but okay. It's okay. Nope. How do you draw cards, my friend? What possibility do you have to draw cards? Five mana left. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I even questioned you. Sure. Exile it, my friend. Exile it. Um, pum, pum, pum. Go for two. And play my loam speaker. He can return our token force me to discard nothing or return the loam speaker and discard the loam speaker i would have gone for the loam speaker to be honest i don't know why my opponent chose to go for token but i think this is a, like a common play because people keep a heart in heart a card in hand then you return it and the opponent discards uh, a card uh, he could also theoretically um return like fable of the chicky bricky and then uh, Um, and then uh, replay it again to have more card selection, right? But uh, let's see, let's see. 
We just need a good hit. Just, just one good hit. That's all. Do, 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 do. Green, green. Briefcase, sure. Good choice for card draw. I have briefcase too, obviously. My opponent decides to do nothing. Drawing land here is the wor Laika. Drawing hand here is, is uh, obviously the worst scenario I have. But my opponent is forced to chump block. Let's make some lands. Let's attack with some lands. And let's see if we can find an answer for the Kami War. Don't think so, but who knows? We double block it, yeah. Double block it. Doesn't matter which one we kill. My opponent could have gone inf infinite or almost infinite, but he don't have enough mana for it. So that's okay. Playing the land. And see if my opponent gonna escalate from now on. A funk. Okay. Sure. He can draw already with briefcase, so I don't really need to do anything much more here. Portal. Portal will be nice answer. Okay, not anymore. Not anymore. So most likely we are that next turn. Yes, we are that next turn. Good game, my friend. Good game. There is nothing I can do against it. This is a terrible top deck. Maybe Atraxa would help me, right? Yeah, the question is, could I even cast Atraxa? Green is covered three colors. I have two colors fixing. Um, this produces green mana. Sure. So there is... Um, I said good game, my friend. Just attack. Just attack with all. I, I will not block. So I could not even cast a Traxa, so this was not in my favor. We recovered good from the Sweeper, but um, give me a briefcase, give you Cheeky. I, I can give you more if you want. And uh, Shade of Prophecy, go for it, my friend. Um, I could have recovered more, but I think for this deck, it's more than expected. Uh, this deck went now 9-2. to two. And 9 to 2 is a really good result for Mono Green uh, with this sort of, um, let's say, surprise factor. <laughs> surprise Mono Green. Um, I called it unexpected Mono Green because nobody expected Traxo or Portal to Perex or a lot of other things. Uh, people usually expect Titan, right? Titan of Industry uh, is possible to add here too if you think, okay, I could use sometimes a Titan, but usually you win. As I said, Nisa hitting the board, all your tokens, everything getting like, I don't know, 7, 8 um, with Trample and um, all your uh, Portal to Perexis, Atraxis, this is the game changer. This is the game winner um, against the most of the decks. And it makes fun. It's actually fun. To win games like this is fun and to play this deck is super, super fun. Uh, I definitely recommend to craft it. Uh, this deck has a really, really good win rate. The only decks that you see, defeat us are more jankier approaches, more jankier decks. So you, it takes a jank to beat a jank. Um, and <laughs> this way, if if you are facing more non-jankier versions or non-jankier decks, go for it. This deck is definitely something that will carry you a long way where you want to be. And it's really, really easy to adapt. You can change your top end. Uh, you can put more Portal to Perixis. You can put more Atraxas. You can put more Titans if you have, um, if you don't have some sort of um, uh, card draw card selection. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I like this deck really much. I definitely recommend to, 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 um, to craft it. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like it. And I hope to see you in the next one. Ciao.